Welcome to the second lecture on the stochastic process. In the first lecture, I have discussed about the definition of the stochastic processes with some examples, and uh, then uh, I have discussed about uh, the classification of the stochastic processes based upon the nature of the state space and the time domain. Now, in this lecture, I will discuss some uh, uh, types, some different types of stochastic processes which uh, will be used uh, in later lectures. So, first of them is the counting processes. As the name suggests, this process uh, will count something. So, uh, it is a stochastic process and we denote it by xt such that t belongs to index set capital T and uh, it is defined in discrete or continuous time. That means capital T it may be a discrete set or it may be a continuous set. And its, its state space takes uh, uh, whole numbers that means 0, 1, 2 and so on. And uh, there is an important property uh, and but this property says that xt is non-decreasing function of t. That means uh, e either it will increase or it will uh, be constant. So, mathematically, if uh, I choose two t1 and t2 from uh, time domain such that t1 is smaller than t2, then x t1 will be less than or equal to x t2. This, this shows that uh, x t is not decreasing function of t. So, what we are doing actually here, uh, we are counting something actually. So, for example, x t denotes the cumulative number of occurrences of some events some events such that car accidents over the interval 0 to t. For example, if you are if you are uh, going to count the car accidents, then car accident may be 0, it may be 1, it may be 2 and uh, you know that if there are two car accidents and if you wait for some time, it uh, will not decrease. It will be either 2 or it will become 3 and so on. So, uh, this kind of thing, uh, we can uh, model them with counting processes. So, you have already uh, seen the uh, Poisson processes. So, Poisson processes are actually uh, example of counting processes. So, we will see uh, these things in, late, uh, in later discussions uh, in detail. So, second uh, is the uh, process having independent increment. So, what is increment first thing is? we must know the meaning of increment. So, if uh, at time t, the state of the process will be xt and at time t plus u, where u is a positive number, the state of the process will be xt plus u. So, if we take the difference between xt plus u minus uh, xt, that means difference between these two numbers. So, uh, the later state minus the previous one. So, this uh, uh, we know as uh, this we call increment of the process. So, when these increments will be independent, uh, we say that a process xt is said to have independent increments if for all t and all u which is a positive number the increment xt plus u minus xt is independent of all the past of the process xs where s is between 0 to t. So, you can see here that uh, you are taking uh, x at time t and you are taking x at time t plus u and now you are taking the difference and saying that this difference must be independent of every xs which is before t or up to time t. So, that means uh, uh, this does not depend upon past of the process. So, we, we can see the example of this. For example, uh, let x t where t belongs to 0, 1, 2 and so on be such that x t plus 1 is equal to x t plus z t plus 1, where z t is a sequence of i i d random variables. So, if it is a sequence of high ID random variables, that means it will not depend upon time t. So, here if we find uh, increment where the u is equal to 1, so that increment will be x t plus 1 
minus x t and by definition it will be just uh, z t plus 1. So since z t plus 1 uh, contains only t plus 1 and th they are id, so it will not depend upon uh, any x t. So it will be independent of whole of the past of the process. But this is only for u is equal to 1 and definition demands for every u positive. So uh, it must be understood uh, first that when you are defining x t plus u, t plus u must be uh, in the time domain. You cannot say that for every t plus u. t plus u and t both must be in the time domain because whenever you are defining a stochastic process, the subscript must belong to time domain. So here time domain is 0, 1, 2 and so on. So x after x t plus 1, we will take x t plus 2. Because uh, we, you can see that uh, they are uh, in uh, they are increment 0, 1, 2 and so on. So if I take x t plus 2 minus x t, then you can add uh, and subtract x t plus 1, then it will become z t plus 2 plus z t plus 1. Again, it will be independent of uh, all of x t. So, we have shown that for u is equal to 1, for u is equal to 2, it, uh, they are independent. Similarly, you can show that for any u positive such that uh, t plus u belongs to uh, time domain, this increment will be independent of the past of the process. We can easily show this. So, wh how, what, uh, what are the examples? Uh, examples we will see later. Uh, now, very important uh, stochastic process uh, which is uh, strictly stationary process. So, strictly stationary process uh, simply says that uh, your statistical pro properties of the process will not change as time elapsed. This is the basic uh, uh, understanding that uh, whether you will move forward or backward, your statistical properties will not change. So, what does it mean? Mathematically, a stochastic process xt, where t belongs to capital T, is said to be stationary or strictly stationary. If the joint distributions of xt1, xt2, dot 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 xtn, and x h plus t1 x h plus t2 dot 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 x h plus tn are identical for all t1 t2 tn and h plus t1 h plus t2 h plus tn in capital T and for all integers n. So, what does it mean? You can see what we are doing, we are saying that you choose uh, some n random variables from the process. So, I am choosing t1, t2, tn as the time and random variables are xt1, xt2, xtn. So, you have chosen some n random variables from the process and you have found their joint distributions. Okay? Then, you move h forward or backward in the time domain and then you will have x h plus t1, x h plus t2, x h plus tn, then you find the joint distribution of these random variables. So, we are saying that these two joint distributions must be identical and this should be, uh, this should happen for every t1, t2, tn and for, for every h plus t1, h plus t2, h plus tn and for every n. That means, whether you choose a single random variable or two random variables or three random variables, whether you choose, uh, uh, for example, x1, x2, x3 or you choose x1, x3, x5 or you choose x1, x7, x9, any kind of uh, combination will be there. So, joint distributions of uh, xt1, xt2, xtn and after h time or before h time, if x is positive, then you, you say that after h or if x is negative, you say that before h. Time. So, xt1, xt2, xtn and 
after or before x h t one t h plus t one x h plus t two and so on, they must be identical. So if I choose n is equals to one here, for example, okay. So n is equals to one. That means you are going to select only one random variable. So I call it uh, x one, for example. Then you take h is equals to one. Then the next ran random variable will be x two. So x one and x two must be identical. Similarly, you can say that x two and x three must be identical. So that means you are saying that all of them have same distribution. Then all of them will have same mean and same variance. So uh, in that sense, we are saying that statistical properties uh, will not change. Okay, but this is very stringent condition. That means it is very difficult to get these kind of processes uh, uh, everywhere. So we will uh, make it weak, and we define weakly stationary process. So what uh, uh, we will do in weakly stationary process, we just focus upon mean and covariance. So a stochastic process X T. With the uh, expected value of x t square finite, that means uh, you are saying the second order moment is finite for every t, and then this uh, uh, process is said to be weakly stationary if expected value of x t is constant for all t. That means uh, it will not vary uh, according to time, and covariance of x t and x t plus k. That means after k time. It only depends upon the lag. Lag means uh, when you move from t to t plus k, the difference between t and t plus k is k. So that we are calling lag. So if your covariance between x t and x t plus k only depends upon k, and your mean is constant, then that kind of uh, stochastic process is known as weakly stationary process. This is also known as covariance stationary process. So we can uh, take example. Uh, let x n n is greater than or equal to one be uncorrelated random variables with mean zero and variance one. Then uh, we can easily see that expected value of x n is zero. It is already given for all n greater than or equal to zero, greater than or equal to one. That means it is a constant number. And if we find covariance between x n and x m. So you can take m is equal to n plus uh, what uh, symbol I have taken n plus k. You can you can take m is equal to n plus k also if you want to to find covariance between x t and x t plus k. But I I have just uh, I will just focus upon the difference between t and t plus k. That was k. So here I will focus upon difference between n and m. So if I find the covariance between x n and x m, then by definition it is uh, expected value of x n x m minus expected value of x n and expected value of x m. But you know that uh, it, they are uncorrelated random variables. If they are uncorrelated random variables and their variance is one, so it can be easily understood that if n and m are different, then this covariance will be zero. And if n and m are same, this covariance will become variance, and that will be one. So you can easily see that when n is equal to m, or in other other another words, n minus m is equal to zero, it comes out to be one. And if n is not equal to m, that means n minus m is not equal to zero, then it comes out to be zero. So I convert it as an indicator function. So I write it down i singleton set zero of m minus n. So it is a function of m minus n, where indicator function defines that i a x will be one if this x belongs to a and zero if x does not belong to a. So you can see that if this m minus n will belong to zero, then it will be One. That means m minus n belongs to zero. That means m m minus n is equal to zero. That means m is equal to n. So it will come out to be one. If m minus n does not belong to zero, that means m minus n is not equal to zero. That means m is not equal to n. It will come out to be zero. 
so you can see that it is a function of the difference of m and n so it satisfies the properties of euclid stationary uh, process it has constant mean and the covariance of xn and xm only depends upon the lag which is m minus n now we will see uh, one more example so uh, which is not weakly stationary so now consider a process xt where t is uh, greater than or equal to 0 and uh, process defines probability that xt is equal to n which is equal to e to the power minus at at to the power n divided by factorial n where n varies from 0 1 to up to infinity and a is a positive number and this probability is zero otherwise so clearly it uh, resembles with the poisson distribution so one can easily say that expected value of xt is 80 and uh, variance of xt is also 80 because it it looks like it is actually e to the power minus lambda lambda to the power n divided by factorial n where lambda is 80 so you can see that expected value is a times t which is a function of t so it is not a constant number similarly variance of xt is also not constant so it avoids the condition number 1 of the weakly stationary poisson process which says that expected value of xt must be constant so if if it avoids any one of the condition it will not be a weakly stationary process so clearly xt is not a weakly stationary process Uh, this process is uh, sometimes known as evolutionary process because it depends upon time so sometimes uh, some uh, author says that it is evolutionary process because it depends upon uh, time so uh, it, it this this was a very small lecture uh, in this lecture i have only discussed uh, about some special kind of uh, processes one is the counting process another is the uh, stationary weakly stationary processes so you have seen that uh, in counting processes we count something over time so it must be it, its state space must be 0 1 2 and so on and it must be non decreasing because when we are counting so counting will not uh, decrease uh, in that sense uh, for example number of accidents so if there are two accidents up to time t and if you further uh, wait Uh, it will be more than two, or it will remain at two. Then, uh, strictly stationary or simply stationary process. Uh, it is a process in which uh, statistical properties will be same. So, you you, you select the a bunch of random variables, for example, x t one, x t two, and uh, x t n. Then you select uh, a bunch of random variable after time h. So that will be x of Uh, h plus t1, x of h plus t2, and so on. A x of h plus t n. Then, if you find the joint distribution of these two bunches of random variables, they must be identical. So that is the strictly stationary process, and it uh, gives us that uh, expected x t will be constant, variance x t will be constant, and other statistical uh, measures will also be constant. Uh, but uh, 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 we will make it uh, some somehow weak by just considering that uh, uh, our expected x is constant and covariance of x t and x t plus k only depends upon k that means the time lag so that is known as weakly stationary then we have discussed uh, one example of weakly stationary and one example which is not weakly stationary and we call it evolutionary because it depends upon time so thank you very much in our next lecture we will discuss uh, uh, markov chain and markov property thank you very much